Hey guys, uh, playing the Jamira Claw game. It's pretty fun, so I'm just gonna show you around. The goal is to dodge uh, chairs. Let me uh, demonstrate. It's kind of like the music video, you know? See? Uh, I'm JK. As you can see, there's a lot of chairs, and I should dodge them all, you know? It's a pretty hard game. But, uh, you know, Jamiroquai themselves is actually a pretty interesting group. Uh, Jamiroquai was actually founded in 1992, and with their lead singer JK, who I'm actually playing as right here, uh, the song Virtual Insanity is off their 1996 album, uh, Travel Without Moving. Uh, the third studio album, ah oh man, third studio album, I believe. Uh, but why this game? Why is this song popular? Well, I don't have all the answers, but besides it sounding good, I say part of the reason, at least for some anime fans, is because it was animated as a rotoscoped ending song, ending animation, for the Stone Ocean anime. Now, if you don't know what that is, Stone Ocean is the sixth part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is a very popular anime and manga series released by Hirohiko Uraki. Um, a fan decided to make a rotoscoped fan ending with the character weather report from the show dancing to the music video of Virtual Insanity. Now, weather report himself is a very interesting character. Now, a lot of my viewers haven't seen or read this part yet, so I won't go too far into spoilers. But weather report stand is called weather report, and a rocky named it after the band Fun Fun Weather Report. Now, Weather Report themselves was a jazz fusion group that was active in the 70s and kind of early to late 80s. Um, unfortunately, they broke up in 86, I believe, but they boasted some of the most talented musicians at the time, one of them being bassist Jacques Pastorius. And a lot of people argue that Pastorius himself is the greatest bass player of all time. And honestly, when you compare it to people like John Paul Jones, Paul McCartney, uh, John Fruciante, uh, Flea. I agree. I think Jocko is one of the most amazing bassists, and I say the most amazing bassist. And like part of the reason is just his spectacular performance on songs like Teen Town and Chicken. With, I actually kind of did the chicken in a uh, uh, jazz band. Um, well, I'm kind of hungry now for chicken. Uh, at home, I always usually cook um, chicken adobo, which is a Filipino dish. And where it gets to the peel is the sauce is from vinegar and soy sauce and a tiny bit of garlic. But it's really good. And if you put chicken legs in that sauce, there's kind of this tangy sort of taste. And if you add boiled eggs and hot dogs, you get this amazing kind of blend of flavors. Okay, that wasn't even fair. That wasn't even an opening. Oh well. No potatoes though. Potatoes doesn't really fit well with the vinegar taste. I don't know why, maybe it's the starch or something. But Filipino culture is just so rich, and I'm sad to see the state that the country is in now because we have the dictator Duarte, who is extremely tyrannical with his power, and right now he used violence to start a drug war, but he's killed hundreds and not thousands of innocent people in order to catch these drugs, which has failed. And furthermore, his lockdowns for the recent COVID-19 pandemic are leaving many Filipino citizens destitute completely poor. And it's brutal to see what's going on. Come on, man. You know, this game needs some balancing. It's kind of like Duarte sort of reminiscent of Fernand Marcos, who was this leader of the Philippines around the 70s and kind of the 80s. Um, he was also very authoritarian and was a dictator. Oh my god, what happened to JK? Okay. Uh... From extreme debt, to extreme poverty, to even illegal martial law to maintain power. Marcos did everything he could to make the Philippines a horrible place. He was corrupt and a morally terrible person. That's why after Cory Aquino took power in 86, he freed my people. And even his past is just so false. He claims he was part of the Bataan Death March, which was this event in World War II after the Japanese captured the Philippines. He claims he was a part of that, but that was proven to be false by both the US government and the Filipino government. But once Cory Aquino, ah, oh, come on, man. Once Cory Aquino took power, everything sort of changed. <laughs> Cory. It reminds me of the song Cory Wong from 
Wolf Pack, which is another sort of like jazz, kind of funk fusion rock, because it's kind of everything. How do you... I just want to get to the chorus, come on, man. <sighs> this game sucks, man. But you know what doesn't suck? Cory Wong. It's such a cool, fun song with two guitars, piano, bass, drums. It's just some of the smoothest kind of music you can find. Another really great song that Wolfpack did was uh, Dean Town. Not to, not to mix up with Teen Town. Teen Town was the weather related song for, come on, Mista, I mean, JK. <sighs> Dean Town starts with this really cool sort of like eighth note F sharp pattern. Um, it's funny because Dean Town is actually probably the most popular uh, song by Daft Punk. And it was even used in a rip from Silva Gunner in their uh, Keen for Another Day tournament. Someone mashed up Dean Town with Persona 5's Last Surprise. Now, Persona is a really, really great game series. Um, it, it's more or less about accepting your inner self and using your powers to change society. Or at least that's what the fifth game is. Every kind of game is kind of different. Like, the fifth game, you have to tear off your mask to summon your Persona. The fourth game, you gotta crush a tarot card. Third game, you gotta use a gun to shoot yourself. Not a real gun, they call it an evoker. And it's very balanced, and there's one feminine MC, FemC, in the Persona 3 series, but she's not a Mary Sue. But you know who is a Mary Sue? Rey from the new Star Wars trilogy. Now, what I dislike about Rey is she just knows everything right off the bat. In two days, she became a Jedi Master and managed to push Luke Skywalker to his feet. Push him down. She was able to... She was able to Figure out the Millennium Falcon in like two hours compared to Han Solo, taking like how many years to figure it out? It's ridiculous. And this is why I hate about modern Hollywood is they overpower these characters, not just females, but males too, and just makes the movies just unenjoyable. I will say though, Han Solo is such a great character. Too bad he died in Force Awakens. Harrison Ford is probably one of my favorite actors. I probably like him the most in. Either Han Solo in the Star Wars trip films or probably Indiana Jones. Okay, that's the lowest score I've gone. When I think about Indiana Jones, I think about that one Duke Town scene. He never the Crystal Skull, I believe. Uh, he just straight up just escapes a nuclear blast in a fridge. Like, come on, man. How is that even possible? I think someone actually proved it was possible, but I'd rather not try it. Mostly because if there was a nuke detonated, it'd probably be from the Russians and we'd all be dead. Indiana Jones was a Lego game. Yeah, it was a Lego game. There were two. And I specifically remember the second one where you had controllable whip physics. The Lego games are really my childhood. You didn't just have Lego Indiana Jones, you had Lego Harry Potter, Lego Batman, even the Lego movie games. Though by the time the Lego movie came out, I was a little less into Legos, but. Uh, Lego Batman is pretty good. It kind of reminds me of Scribble Knots, but. I think the most interesting sort of thing I've seen related to DC, besides Wonder Woman 1984, was probably Joker featuring Joaquin Phoenix and Robert De Niro. It was such a great commentary on modern society, and as Joker said before he killed Robert De Niro, we live in a society. It really makes you question the merits of what life is like today and whether or not the American dream is truly achievable. But I'd like to focus a little more on Robert De Niro, because everyone talks about Joaquin Phoenix, but Robert De Niro, he's been in so many great movies, and I think my most favorite movie with Robert De Niro is probably Goodfellas. To give a brief synopsis, Goodfellas is, I wouldn't say a period film, but a film that takes place over the span of many years, talking the story of Henry Hill and his relationship with the Brooklyn Mafia in an Italian neighborhood. Now, it's a very morally ambiguous movie with tons of deaths and tons of killings. And every actor is great, even Joe Pesci, if he won an Oscar for it. But ironically, I feel like a lot of people forget that Joe Pesci is one of the Wet Bandits in the Home Alone series. Only one or two, though. No one cares about the other, like, 50 or whatever. Although Home Alone's a great movie, I personally prefer Elf because it has Will Ferrell. I think my favorite Will Ferrell film is probably Anchorman, or Anchorman 1 or 2. And I specifically remember the Anchorman 2 fight scene, where it just had every star in Hollywood at that time. Amy Poehler, Tina Fey. Vince Vaughn, Kanye West, Kristen Wiig, Steve Carroll, ah, oh, Steve Carell, office man, sorry, Paul Rudd, who was Ant-Man, David Kochnir, Sasha Baron Cohen, and even Drake. It's, it's crazy to believe that Borat was an Anchorman, too. 
And if you're not familiar with Bora, it's such a great sort of satirical film. Like 2000 something. But Sasha Baron Cohen plays the role of Borat, who's traveling from Kazakhstan to the United States to learn more about the United States. Kazakhstan is a former Soviet Union territory, declared independence in 1991. Um, their capital is Nur Sultan, which was changed from Astana to Nur Sultan in probably uh, 2019, I think. It's the largest landlocked country, it borders the Caspian Sea to the west, Russia to the north, China to the east, and then also former Soviet Union territories, Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan in the south. Now China is China, but you know what's next to China? Japan. What does Japan have? Simple. Sushi, manga, anime. There's so many great anime out there. I talked a bit about JoJo, but such legendary animes like K-On! and Attack on Titan, Hunter x Hunter, Haiku, My Hero Academia, they truly live in influence not just on Eastern culture, but Western culture too. I like to talk about My Hero a little bit. I have some problems with My Hero. We'll see because Deku is a crybaby bastard. Uh, he got his power from All Might in like episode one. The book is called One for All. But I just dislike Deku because he's just sad and crying all the time. It's ridiculous. But All Might's pretty cool though because he essentially represents the United States of America. And if you don't know, the U.S. was formerly a British colony. But I just find it sort of poetic, because Jamiroquai is from England, and all of a sudden we're back to Jamiroquai. Unfortunately, I never got to the chorus, but I think I proved my point. The point is, treat people nicely, and I'll see you in the next episode of Never. Thank you.